um, just a reminder, you've seen it probably uh, a lot over the last two days, ask questions through the app and don't forget to rate it and provide feedback for me in the end, please. Um, as Sven said, my name is Dina and I've been running a co-working space in Hamburg for two years and building it up. And I learned an awful lot at that time and I'd like to share this knowledge and insights today with you during that session. I work as an agile coach for a company called Smiedig, which is the northern German word for agile. Um, and um, yeah, I enjoy doing that. And before we really deep dive into co-working, just a little warning. Co-working means participation. So I'm going to ask you to speak to other people, to raise your hands. I have colorful buttons here. I put them in the front row, so at some point in time you need to grab them somehow to be able to participate, because I'd like to play a little bit with you. And if you're not comfor comfortable doing that, please feel free to, to leave the session and ask me anything you would like to know in a way that is more comfortable for you. So what actually brought me to co-working was serendipity. Because to cut a long story short, I was looking up secondhand shops for kids in the internet and ended up running a co-working space in Hamburg. And that is something we really like to create because co-working is not so much about the spaces but about the people. And so whenever we have the possibility, the people running those particular spaces, we are trying to create um, opportunities for you to speak to each other. So one thing you usually do when you enter a co-working space and you are with other people, you introduce yourself and you speak a few words so that you might find something like I did back in, a, in those years, you might find something you were not looking for. But it is a very fortunate coincidence for you to have found that thing after you found it. So to be able to do that, I'd like you to speak to a person sitting close to you. So some of you might need to move a little bit and just take two or three minutes and yeah, start looking around. Whom would I like to get to know better? Who's close to me? <laughs> yeah, go and find that person first. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, you can also do it in a small group, no worries. Because this is our pop-up co-working space, so. And the thing I'd like you to... Sp <laughs> to just briefly um, chat about is, who am I and why am I in that session right now? So take three minutes, one and a half minutes each roughly, and um, I'm going to signal to you when the time is over. As soon as you see me doing that, please be quiet and raise your hand as well so that we all can quickly be quiet and enjoy and get to know your neighbor better, your coworker for the next 45 minutes. Thank you so much. You just created my favorite noise, and that is the sound of people talking to each other. I facilitate a lot of things and I always love this when people are engaged really in a conversation or in a discussion. So co-working, many of you think about the spaces probably. This is what we see a lot um, on, um, on blogs, on the websites, on marketing um, activities. But co-working really goes back to um, meeting a challenge that we all probably have heard of. And when I worked as a community manager, lots of people approached me and said without knowing me, so you work as an agile coach. And I always said, no, I don't. I don't do anything with software. And when the first person turned to me, I thought like, that's okay. Then another one, another one, and another one. And I thought, that is weird. I don't do anything with software. I don't do any of this agile stuff. And still people coming to me saying, you must be an agile coach. Where does that come from? So I knew the co-working manifesto quite well, and that for me was the basis to work. Um, and then I realized there is an agile manifesto. So my first thought was like, oh, how funny, they have an 
manifesto too, until I realized that is the older sibling and the co-working manifesto is the younger sibling because they kind of are interdependent. But what really, why are these spaces there? What are we trying to do with them? Because they are just a tool for us. Co-working to the co-working movement and the people in the movement means something completely different to what many people know about co-working. So um, the challenge that we all can see is that society is facing economic, environmental, social and cultural challenges. But we also believe that these can be um, turned into opportunities. Um, that is the underlying belief of everything that we do within the co-working movement. And um, as we say, we can turn these challenges into opportunities, how do we do that? We think people just need to work together. So there hasn't been a time in history where we had more knowledge, more tools, more things in our hands that we can turn into something that can be really useful for humankind. So um, we think the solution is people need to work together. And to be able to do that, we need to create opportunities and spaces where different people can meet, work together, where communities overlap so that we um, can see how people um, start to exchange ideas from very different perspectives. And I think we had a number of uh, talks already where you could see this working for many areas. So what we are really trying to achieve is a new economic engine composed of collaboration and community. In contrast to the silos we've been seeing the um, past two um, centuries. So we are really not trying to rent space to you or a desk to you, but we are trying to achieve something bigger than that. So to be able to do that, to really work together on, on a basis of trust, we realized there's a certain set of principles, just like we have in the Agile Manifesto or our so-called code of conduct. Um, and uh, that, that's the one you can see up front here. And um, as with the Agile Manifesto, there are, we acknowledge there are both sides and we're not saying one is completely bad and you should only go for the other, but we say just be mindful of what you are trying to achieve and what you're using. Um, and if you are a person who wants to belong to the co-working movement, we value collaboration over competition, communities over agendas, participation over observation, this is why I'm going to ask you to get involved today, doing over saying, friendship over formality, boldness over assurance, learning over expertise, people over personalities, and value ecosystem over value chain. And for me, when I started to work more with what I found in, in Agile, um, we often use in our work the Canavian framework, which provides um, um, things where you can look into when you work in complex environments and software development is probably very complex as the work with people generally is. So in order to find new ways of doing things, you need to be bold and you need to try out something new and experiment. And you are not sure because your expertise, your knowledge doesn't get you any further or can't create the solution you're looking for. So many of these things for me have a lot of um, things that are in common when working with an agile mindset um, and uh, in the agile way of working. So we have five pillars um, that all the things we are do in co-working, um, everything we do is based on, even if we create our spaces. So value number one is openness. We are trying to be open to new ideas, to new models, to new ways of thinking. And um, some people say, well, we are so open, we 24-7 offer our services to you so that no matter when you want to work, you can come to the space and um, do the best you can to help get that vision um, to life. Um, the, the next one is community. So we believe we can't solve these challenges or find new ways one single person for everything, but we believe we need a community to really achieve those goals. Accessibility is the third one. So we're trying to give access to people to, for example, knowledge 
And I used to run a very small co-working space. And one thing we figured out that really worked well with giving access to knowledge of, or expertise was a very simple thing. Once a month we met for pizza and drinks and everybody brought their tasks that they don't enjoy doing on their own. Uh, for many people it was updating the website, doing text declarations, all these kind of things. So we sat around the table um, and you can be reassured there was always someone at the table who was able to help someone else with something. Like sitting there like, mm, I w don't know how that WordPress thing works. And someone else saying, let me have a look, I can help you. So giving people access to the knowledge of others, for example, is something that we have in mind when we create these spaces. Sustainability also is very important to us. So in many spaces, um, which work according to the manifesto, you, for example, can find used furniture because we believe there's enough furniture in the world, so, well, let's not produce new stuff, let's just use what is there. Um, you also will find that very often people there have organic food, organic drinks, we are trying to save energy, all these kind of things that are important. And every space that you see tries to live um, up to these um, values. And one colleague, for example, he tells me always, well, the way I see sustainability is I help create small sustainable businesses uh, by providing the space to entrepreneurs who just starting to run their business or solo entrepreneurs. So that's a way of thinking of sustainability as well. And collaboration. We truly believe we need to collaborate to make things happen. So we provide you in the space with all the things that you need to collaborate. So there are often as creative material that you can use and work with. There often are rooms where you can gather and meet. There are silent areas also, because sometimes you just, in order to collaborate, you need some time for yourself to sort out your ideas. Um, but that is truly something we believe is important. Now, I said, um, you know, I'm going to ask you to speak to other people, so I'm going to ask you again to speak uh, to a person sitting close to you, but this time try and make a choice. Which of the five values is the most important for you personally, if you had to pick one? I know many people say, oh, it's difficult to pick between openness, sustainability, community, accessibility, and collaboration, but give it a try. Which one to you is most important, and why is that? Just talk for that like three minutes like we just did before, please. Thank you. So was it easy to pick one for you? Uh, I can see. <laughs> I find it very hard and I realize that um, there are times where I pick one straight away and say, that's the one I need to work on. And if you ask me six months later, I may be going, mm, maybe another one. So I realize uh, over the years that I've been in co-working now, these keep changing for me depending on the things I'm doing, the projects I'm working on, but I always have those five in mind as the basis for good co-working. And um, so you can enjoy working on one and a year later working on the other one. There is one thing that is um, really important to us in the co-working scene. We're asking you to save coffee mugs. And what we mean by that is that co-minus working is not the same as co-working. Um, because every time you write co-minus working, we believe a coffee mug dies in a co-working space. Um, the co-minus working for us is the shared, simply the shared infrastructure, which is a good thing because you um, use a room together, you use furniture together, you uh, use less energy because you share a room, all these kind of things, they are great, but they are not what we mean by co-working. So the people from the co-working movement are very carefully always writing co-working without the minus in the middle. So it's that easy. If you have co-minus working and I want co-working, I simply go to where co-working is at the front door, right? Not really, because everybody is allowed to use the term co-working. You can't protect it. So as co-working became more and more interesting to people from other areas, 
everybody said, we do co-working, we offer co-working, we have a co-working space, and these can be such different things as small office communities or business centers or incubators and accelerators. Co-working with the miners, which for me is managed real estate, they provide you with a super infrastructure, well-designed, everything very beautiful, but they don't have community and people in the center of what they are doing. And of course, real co-working. So how can you, as a user, as someone who wants to go and co-work, really distinguish between all these things? And the way we're going to find that out is I'd like to play with you a little bit. And I pro um, provided some of the chairs with these three colorful paper things. They're all in the front, I'm afraid. Please, um, if you could get those, um, and I'll help you and distribute a few more of these. I don't know if you know that... Thank you. One for everyone, yeah. So everyone should have all three colors. And I don't know if you're familiar with that uh, game show for kids. I loved to play it when I was younger. Um, the um, show master usually asks a question and there are three possible answers to that question. And the kids usually jump around and pick the field in which the, they think the right answer is and then suddenly the light goes off in the wrong ones and on in the right one. Yay, you have a point. So with me, yeah, there's no jumping around today. I thought this is a bit too tricky. But if you could, you want to jump? We, you can jump. <laughs> I thought it's just more easy to say, okay, one, two, or three is my option. <laughs> Next time we'll jump, okay. Um, but this time there's no wrong answer. It's just trying to give you an idea of what to ask, what to look for, what to think about when you are looking for a space that you'd like to work in. So let's start our first round. How much interaction do you prefer when you work? The more people and events around me, the better. Number two, a small community of five to ten people really is enough. Or the sound of keyboard rattling in the coffee machine is just fine for me. One, two, or three. Okay. So we, we have a lot of twos. Um, we have also ones, and the ones I recommend for you, go and look for a big, co you can take the signs down. Go and look for a big co-working community. And what I mean by big is not big by square meters. What I mean by big is big by community members. And that often is the first thing if someone tells you we have the biggest co-working space in town, you ask by square meters or by people, community members. Um, because square meters typically is what real estate people will sell you. Community members is what the co-working people will sell you because the more community members you have, the more um, events they can offer because usually the events and the spaces are created by the members themselves. So the community manager walks up to you and says, I know you have an expertise in, let's say, WordPress. How about running a WordPress um, uh, FAQ every now and then? or yoga classes, or whatever they think you can do really well, they are going to ask you to create an event. And if you're looking for that kind of thing around you, you need that kind of atmosphere, go for the big co-working communities, not the square meters. A small community of five to 10 people, um, we had some yellow here as well, um, we have those small co-working spaces. It's not only office communities nowadays, we have, um, Particularly here in Berlin, we have the Keats Bureau, which is Björn running lots of very small co-working spaces just around the corner of your home, probably. So you can look for the smaller spaces, where it's a bit calmer, but you still meet people, like-minded people, and have them around you. And the sound of keyboard rattling and the coffee machine, um, probably you like to work in a coffee place. Um, because you like this white noise, you like this atmosphere, and there are spaces who have both things integrated into their spaces, and you can work in the coffee area or you can work in the open space area. Um, I'm just asking you to be mindful if you work in a real coffee place, which happens to have Wi-Fi, 
the business model of that person depends on you consuming something. So they probably will come around every now and then and ask you, can I bring something? Do you want to eat something? Do you want to drink something? Please be kind and help that person have a sustainable business and drink a coffee or have some food there because we had people sitting in coffees bringing their own food and drinks. And that's kind of weird. I can understand that you love this atmosphere, but bear in mind what the person's trying to achieve who's running that particular space. So round number two, how, for, how often would you like to work from your space? Is that number one, I will decide that every day on the fly. Number two, no, every day I want to go to that space or two to three times a week, I don't know, but more than deciding it on the fly. One, two or three. Oh, good mixture there, lots of blue, okay. <laughs> So we'll start with blue then. Two to three times a week, that is something if you found your space, it's worth looking into a membership there. We often have these um, small membership um, things where you have access to the rooms um, like on a limited number of days or on a limited number of business hours like from 10 to 6 or something. That might be valuable for you. Um, people who would like to go everywhere to the same spot definitely go for a membership. Because what we want is that you, be, that you are going to be part of our community. And the way we reward this is we lower our membership rates the longer you are committed to staying with us. Because we believe then this kind of trust is built that we need for you to collaborate with the others around you so that you can um, then contribute to the aim of that particular co-working space. If you want to decide every day where you work, just take day passes. Lots of co-working spaces have a day pass option and you can just simply book you, yourself in for a day and do something completely different the next day. And where would you like to work? Where do you do your um, work most of the time? Only in your hometown, number one. In several cities here in Germany, number two. Or around the globe. Number three, one, two, or three. Yeah, good mixture there as well. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. So for those of you who say only in my hometown, um, the tip I'll give you here is don't overanalyze the websites, the Google things, all these things that are available. Just go and see. That is something, um, I'm, I have a lean background, go see is uh, something very important for us. Try out this space. Um, don't try to find out if this is the space for you from home at your computer. Go and see if you like the people, if you like the atmosphere, if you like the events they are offering. Um, simply try them out. Most of the spaces have um, free trial days or days where everybody can come in and just uh, try them out. So make use of these options. Uh, we luckily show you around and explain you everything. Don't be afraid to go there and do it. So boldness was one of the things in the principles. So just be bold and go in there and ask if you can work there for a day. If you want to work in several cities here in Germany, it's worthwhile looking into the bigger communities like Beta House um, and others who have um, either a partnership with different um, other spaces so that you are a member of, let's say, Beta House in Berlin and you can use, of course, Beta Houses in Hamburg, where we will soon have two, or in other European cities. Um, and very often, a good co-working manager would be able to tell you, well, I'm go traveling to Stuttgart. Can you recommend me someone in Stuttgart where I can go to? And we do that because we believe it's important that people meet and communities overlap. So we are not going to convince you that our space is the best one, but we will make sure you find the place where you can be a happy working person. And if you want to work around the globe, there are helpful apps like Copass, where you can not only find your space, but also book the space right away. Um, so if you are really working like a digital nomad all around the world, it may be worthwhile installing one of these apps, uh, looking at these platforms and finding your space to work. Next question is, how important is a personal workspace to you? Number one, I don't care a lot about this. Number two, my own desk is important for me. 
Or number three, I need lots of things with me to be able to work, like records, paintings, a big screen. Um, one, two, or three. Oh, that's colorful now. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. So number one, if you don't care where you work, you're what we call an um, open space and flex desk person. So these are the options that usually have come at, at lower rates because we uh, uh, appreciate that you come in, do your work, go away, and once you're gone, we can rent that space out to another person. And that's what you find under flex desk. Number two, um, if you need stuff with you and you're a big screen or you say, I'd like to know where I sit every working day, then you are more of a fixed desk person. Um, that's usually a bit more expensive because we can't rent that space out to someone else. It'll be yours. Nobody will be touching the things on your desk and you know you always have your preferred seat by the window. If you need lots of things, some co-working spaces offer little offices, and by little, I really mean little, uh, just a few square meters. The reason for that, why um, in real co-working spaces the offices are so tiny is we know you need the stuff um, to work, but what we don't want is that you disappear in there, feel so cozy that you never come out, expect in the evening when you leave. So we'd like you to come out and have a coffee with the others, and that makes lots of sense if you know what we are trying to achieve. So in real co-working spaces, the team offices are tiny. I'd like to show you three spaces that to me are the top three spaces here in Berlin um, for developers. And number one for me is the Sankt Oberholz, which is um, created with lots of knowledge and love for people who like to co-work. They have a coffee and they have a co-working space, so if you want to move in between a coffee, atmosphere, coffee house atmosphere and um, quieter areas, the Sankt Oberholz is really um, a great place to work from. As is um, also the Beta House. Um, I mentioned Beta House because they have a bigger community of spaces all across uh, Europe. Um, they are very knowledgeable about what you need to work. Um, and they provide a super infrastructure for you there. And number three is Enclave, which uh, saying Berlin's best rated co-working space on their website. And what you typically, typically can see on the websites of co-working spaces, like here, is real people in real situations. Sometimes a bit blurred photographs, but the reason for that is we're people-centered. We won't usually show a lot of design things only in empty spaces, but we will show a lot of people on our websites. And there is one I'd like to draw your attention to. Berlin has a um, women-only co-working space now, and they are growing so fast, they are going to switch locations, and they have a um, crowdfunding campaign running currently. Um, this is usually what we do when we grow bigger, we ask the community to contribute to that. So if you're interested in that kind of co-working space, co-women is your space. So I said doing our saying is um, important to us. So if you want to read more, um, I include some links. I'm not going into detail with everything, but you can get the presentation afterwards. So there are certain online magazines like DeskMag, which also does the annual co-working survey. So if you're thinking about maybe opening a space yourself, which for many, many spa uh, people who run spaces was the biggest motivation to create a space where they can really brilliantly work from, um, you can find inspiration there. You can find um, all uh, many co-working spaces in Germany um, in the 100 co-working spaces DE from Tobias. He asked um, 100 co-working spaces all across Germany, rural areas, urban areas, south, west, east, north, to introduce themselves on that uh, blog. The German Co-working Federation, if you're thinking about running a space yourself, um, is um, running classes um, where the people who run spaces for a long time tell you what mistakes not to repeat and help you take that learning curve faster. And um, if you want to work, I already mentioned um, those platforms like Meshwill, Copass, or ShareDNC, where you can find your space to work. And if you want to meet people from the co-working scene, um, just come to either co-working Europe, 
it's in two weeks' time in Amsterdam. So if you ma can make some time in your calendar, that's an event you can go to or the Cowork 19, um, which takes place in Mannheim. That's the German-speaking uh, pe co-working people meeting there. And you can meet people from who run spaces, who do research on um, co-working, who are co-workers themselves and just um, happy members of the movement. Um, so it's a colorful mixture of different people you can meet there. And we reached our final destination. Um, I told you a little bit about where co-working is coming from, what to look for if you want to pick your dream space or find your dream space. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me anytime via different channels. And um, yeah, that's the end of my presentation. And I'm curious to see if you have any questions on co-working. And don't forget to rate my session and give me some feedback, please. <laughs>